Ironhide, we gotta stop that water. Stop talking, pack your shop of Norbers and get in. We're gonna make a new river. Welcome back to the Tide Hero Hanger. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about both the Magic Square Ryu and Magic Square Ken. This is their take on a very G1 esque Ratchet and Ironhide, which we really do need in both the Legend scale. We also could use this in the Mastery scale. But anyway, we're going to compare both of these today. We're going to take a look at them. I did get them both from Shozi. I'll have a link down below where you can get yours. So let's take a quick look at Ryu and Ken. Coming up. First off, taking a quick look at the packaging, very Magic Square-ish. Now, see, they were having window boxes. They kind of got rid of the window boxes, which I don't really care so much. But it, it would be kind of cool to come across maybe a convention and seeing a bunch of them and in the box and all that kind of stuff. But here we go. Pretty simple but box. Pretty simple packaging. Okay, so these come with a ton of accessories. Some of them are similar to each other. They also have their own cards and stuff, so that's great. Now... Looking at this, I'm going to show you all the stuff that is the same first. And first off, they both have one of these, which is kind of a launcher kind of piece that goes on their back, like so. And and you can do things with this, which is kind of strange. Uh, you can swap out the tip right here, and you I guess just pull it right off. And then you've got other another tip, I think this one, to put on there, or something along those lines. So So that's kind of interesting right there. It can kind of come over like a cannon if that's something that you wanted to do so so pretty cool overall they both have that except ratchet has the extra features and they both have a backpack now when it comes to the backpack i think that when you look at ratchet's backpack and it's just a white backpack on a white figure it's it's you can't really tell so i would say it's it kind of makes some sense if you're going to display them with backpacks to swap each other's backpack and do it kind of like so so you get a little bit more of a variety in there now i'm sure Screen accuracy might not be might not be 100% screen accurate, but now you can actually see it a little bit better. So I mean, that would be kind of cool with the with the jetpack backpack thing going on there. If I get this focus, they can each come with an extra face, uh, Mr. Super Big Eyebrows there for Ratchet, and then a yelling face for Ironhide. Actually, I think that that worked really well for an Ironhide. Ratchet right, so also comes with these two wrenches here, and then I, I'm guessing this is going to be similar to this piece uh, where it would kind of plug into his forearm. They both have these pieces that I, I'm guessing this stuff is the forearm stuff, the kibble, the fun stuff. It's kind of cool. I don't know if they just use it in one episode or they use it in multiple episodes. So when it comes to hands, I think they have two sets of splayed. One is splayed and more extra splayed than then two pointing Finger, hands, uh, well, a whole set of pointy finger hands, but overall, similar type of hands. So many different options you can use. I'm just going to stick with the uh, standard ones. And these little bits here are standard for just Ironhide, and they replace the hand and do some other stuff. And there's what one of them looks like on his hand, however you want to put it, like this. Kind of cool. All right, quick overlook at both of these guys. They do have... Very minimalistic paint on them because I would have liked to have like the EX version of these or extra shiny. Now the thing is Magic Square is real strange about that. Sometimes they release it with an extra upgraded paint job. Sometimes they do not. So most of it is just bare plastic. But uh, at the $40 price point and what you're going to get with the complexity and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's pretty good. So you do have pretty nice face sculpt on both of them that really does work. The paint on the shoulders right here. The sort of reflective metallic paint on the windshield right there and uh, pretty nice design overall uh, they are a little bit bulkier of a design which i'm still okay with uh it's it's they look fantastic uh very clean in the back for both of them but uh, again like i say minimalistic on the paint app so not really that big of a deal in the bot mode and or in the alt mode so uh still very clean figures very g1 tune accurate let's get into articulation this articulation is pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and go up, way up, and then down on the head, side to side, ball joint. But uh, as I was pointed out in one of my other videos, it's, it's good to let them look like they're flying. Okay, shoulder, all, all this range, uh, then on the ball joint goes all the way around like that. You do have the bicep swivel, and I believe 
not quite double jointed elbow, but past the 90s, so that works. Uh, you have the signature Magic Square Ab Crunch signature, and then legs out to there. And then, so I haven't, I don't know if I've noticed this on too many more of their legends, but they're hiding the hip flap. So the hiding hip flap, I think, is next level for, for legends. It doesn't go too far to the back. You, of course, have the that joint right there for some swivel, and it's sort of a hidden joint, so you're not messing up the sculpts. And you get a double, I thought I thought you got double joint on the knee. Let's get that, yep, double, double on that knee. Now you can argue it breaks the sculpt, but I don't think it's that bad. And then foot, side to side, and then not really any up and down, so side action. All right, we're gonna get into some comparisons. Let's kind of line all this up so it looks symmetrical there. But we're going to compare it to New Age. Now, the thing about this is that I got the New Age one, and I was not very highly impressed with the New Age one. And I only got it because everybody raved about how good it was. And I was like, well, I just don't see it in the pictures. But I'm going to go ahead and get it because I really don't have a decent Ironhide yet. And so I got them. And I was very disappointed with the fact that it just really didn't match the aesthetic that I was thinking. And I've kind of, I kind of like the Magic Square aesthetic. So... Uh, some people just love, a lot of people were raving about this figure. Like, it was the greatest Ironhide ever made, but I still felt like it missed the mark. Like, the lower legs on it, uh, just looking at how the the arm looks, just, I don't know. Just the chest not hitting the expectation the way I would like. So, I didn't really care for the New Age one when I got it. I've got it. And to the point, I never picked up their ratchet. Uh, I was like, I, let's let Magic Square fix this for us. And Magic Square is fixing this for us, for me personally. Now, I do want to point out, though, oddly enough, this isn't painted very well, but still presents a little bit better in a presentation. With the, this chest piece paint, looks a little bit higher, premium type of a paint. And then just the color scheme, just kind of the way the plastic looks or something with it. So there are some pluses to it in that regard. Design-wise, Magic Square kills it. Here's kind of sort of how they blend in with some other figures here. So this is Magic Square, Magic Square. Magic Square's design upscaled with the McFans toys and the wrong color, but whatever. And then this is the, about to get replaced, I mean, about to get another one to review from Magic Square, but this one's the Iron Factory version of Mirage. So you kind of see how they scale, how they work, how they look. They scale perfectly for pretty much everything with Magic Square and everything with McFans toys, so really works out very well, and I think they look good, scale well, awesome. It was the year 2022, and Mike thought he knew how to use force perspective camera tricks. So with this, I kind of like to show how it looks next to the masterpiece and try to kind of get them sorta of close to similar scale. So looking at this, again, I was disappointed in the masterpiece, and I've been saying for years that we need better versions of Ironhide and Ratchet. And I didn't get the hip skirt upgrades and all that kind of stuff that cost almost as much. Now these are the KOs, which doesn't make a difference because it's still about the same, but uh, so they look like from the side. I think this is a massive, massive improvement. And if, if Magic Square made these in the masterpiece scale, it would make sense for two reasons. Number one, it would fix a lot of the masterpiece uh, aesthetic look. I mean, it would look a whole lot better. But it's two in one, two in one mold. Why not do it? It, it would make a whole lot of sense. Uh, just this is so much better of a design than what we got from Takara. Of course, if Magic Square did it, Takara would have to make a 2.0, of course. And and that's that's another issue or bag of worms to open up. But still, these look so much better. Quick little comparison to the G1, and I guess I'm missing a panel there or something. But all I can say is the G1. The nicest thing I can say about the G1 is it sucked. But I've got these. Uh, little head pieces. Let's see what it looks like with uh, the headpiece on it. Oddly enough, the headpiece makes it almost the exact same uh, height as the Magic Square one, but uh, like, where did we come from and where do we go? That's it's pretty interesting right there. All right, so let's get these transformed up. Pretty much the same transformation for each one. So the first thing you do is lift up these shoulders takes just a bit of force, but just grip that shoulder and just pull it up on both sides. And then you can lift them up like so. We're going to uh, open up this and this. And you're basically making like a, 
uh, fold this out too. You're making a window here, which is ingenious. It's like, what are they thinking when they come up with this stuff? That's pretty interesting how they just come up with this stuff. Like I would have never thought to do this, to turn this into a window, but they did. So kind of cool overall. Okay, so now we're going to untab all of this, open this up, and then we have to open all of this. Fold this out. Now there's some tabs that's tabbing stuff in there. I can't even tell you how many tabs are on this thing holding stuff together. So there's this. This folds out like so. And then this here seems to be hooking in these notches into here. So that's how that kind of gives a little bit of resistance there. And then as you can see, we're starting to turn into like the top of it. So what we need to do is fold these arms here down and just kind of keep in perspective when you're transforming this, like what's the shape of the vehicle and all that kind of stuff. Um, fold this out, but I think we need to do this 180 right now. It's like a 180 rotation kind of thing like this, and then we can get back into all the other fun stuff. Um, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put these arms in here. And one thing is you're going to tab it in. I'm going to try to get some tab it in here like so. And then this top piece is going to flip this to the back is going to flatten out and it's just all going to tuck in and flatten at the same time which is another like ingenious move which I I just find it interesting how they kind of come up with this as they go so that's kind of cool obviously this is gonna come down and go here but I think we need to wait until the end so it all tabs together at the same time on that one so this is going to kind of look like this, but we keep it up here. Let's work on these legs a bit. So let's move that up. That's kind of how it's going to be for a bit. All right. So legs are kind of interesting. We're going to open up this panel right there, which is going to allow us to lift this up. And as you can see, we're already moving into the side piece. So if you kind of put it all in perspective, so you kind of understand where we're going. This is the top, this is going to be the side, this is the front, but we're going to have to unfold just a bunch of little tabs and just arrange it so it works. So that's kind of how this is going to go. So what you do is fold this piece here out and then gets a little bit confusing with what we're going to do with this whole foot situation. Uh, so we're going to flip this foot around like this so that we can get clearance for this piece to come out and then it's going to i think it's on a slider like that and then it's going to come around and create the back of it so so keeping everything still in perspective we're, we kind of split this area that's the back of it now this piece comes up and then there's a fold out here and then there's another fold out right here and uh, let me get just a little more light on the situation too. So they're fold out, it's not one to fold out. Just had to get a grip on that. This is another small little fold out piece here. And then we want to kind of straighten everything. There is a tab that tabs into this section there. And then we're going to kind of bring this around and there's a tab here, tab that goes into that. So there's like a whole bunch of things to solidify this corner. And uh, it's all got to go in at sort of the same time, like so. And as you can see, we're, we're just getting another step closer and another step closer. So we're going to do the other side of that. So uh, open this, open, I, keep, I guess I keep trying to open this the wrong direction. That's part of the problem there. Fold this out, kind of separate this rear end piece a bit. Flip this around. Okay, keep it all in perspective. 
flip this around like so and then we can open this up and it kind of slides out it goes out and around oh it's kind of i guess better accurate is it's double jointed a double joint pin and a pin two joints I'll bring this around and get it tabbed in like that there we go and over here flip this up and then we are opening this small tab and then a little it's a small tab but it's a little bit bigger now this side came out a little bit easier and then although it, it at any point it looks like it's a mess you just stop and look at it and say you know bring it to perspective right like i've been saying and then one thing i forgot to do i forgot to close this big tab here so let's uh, fix that on this guy real quick close that big tab and uh Yeah, there's just a lot of tabs and stuff, a lot of flaps, so I'm, even I'm getting confused on it. Okay, so with all that closed up, we can tab all this stuff back in, right here and right here, right here. All right, now we got this tail end ready to go. And then now for the closing procedures, we're going to sort of close all this down and let's get this aligned with that now a lot of the stuff's going to need a line but you can see there's tabs here and here there's a there's tab here here one two three four on just one side so trying to get all that to align up all at the same time and the way this tabs in is you slide it over and that one is pushed down so it's kind of strange on that front bring this around to the back Fold that in. Fold that one in here. There it goes. We can get the front end sort of put into place. No. Front end. Just right. Okay. So, we've got all those in place. We're going to fold this out. And then we're going to kind of slide this piece out and around and then slide it back in. So, so let's show that on this side too. Out and around, and then back in. And then just going around and tabbing everything in, which there's just so many tabs, lining it all up and getting it tabbed in as you go. So this does stay on the outside. You weren't supposed to put that on the inside. And yeah, this is quite a bit of stuff going on, but at the end, you're gonna get a nice looking alt mode. So pretty good looking alt mode overall. All right, so here they are both in their alt mode, and it's a little bit of a transformation there. It's not like something you're going to do, well, I guess it only takes like five or so many. I, when I do editing, I guess I'll know exactly how long it took me, but there we go, both sides. So lots of the blue paint for the windshields on both of them, and you got the pinstripe, you get the, well, this is carried over. No, it's not. That's not carried over because the arms are tucked all inside, so, uh, so extra paint apps. And for some reason on my ratchet, this is not wanting to stay together, but on the iron hide, it stays together just fine. But anyhow, we also do have this, the lights, which they pop on and off. So you can pop them on here if you want, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but still. So pretty cool overall, a pretty good uh, alt mode. In fact, you know, one of the better alt modes that's out there. I do think the masterpiece has a pretty good alt mode. I, it's been so long, I don't remember, but... Uh, kind of rolls a bit uh there is the way it's it's just designed there's kind of the leg piece protruding out that the wheels barely touch so there's still some resistance from those leg pieces but aside from that i mean it's a great look at alt mode and it gets the job done it looks great uh let's do some comparisons first thing i want to compare it to is the original g1 now i do want to point out that the g1 is about the same size in bot mode. But when you get in the alt mode, because G1 has this whole chunk here that's just extra that you add on to it, so it's bigger. So it's still kind of impressive that these are as big as they are versus the G1, considering that they're all compact and you don't have this giant trailer piece, this uh, extra add-on. So very impressive. 
And for alt mode comparison, we have, uh, this is, I think, Magic Square, the New Age 1.0, uh, Iron Factory, Magic Square, and Iron Factory. So those are kind of the alt mode options that I like to compare everything to. And I don't know, this uh, seems to fit okay. I do think New Age is a little bit smaller, and I do think Iron Factory is a little bit bigger in alt mode for all of their vehicles. Now for accessory storage, I'm only going to do uh, the, the Ratchet. I can't fit all of them on the Iron... No, just kidding. There is no storage that I know of for these. Ha. All right, so this has been my take on the Magic Square Ryu and Ken, or their take on the Ratchet and Ironhide. I think they're great figures. I think that they look good in both modes. Uh, the transformation is a little bit more than I was expecting, but it gets the job done. I do believe that uh, this is what we've been needing in both Legends and in Masterpiece, and Magic Square is delivering. I'd like to see them deliver it in Masterpiece also, but I'm very happy for these, and $40 is not a bad price for what all they put into it. I will be a bit sad if they come out with a highly painted one, but uh, I will probably have to pick those up because this is a very good mold and they've done a really good job with it. And so very exciting. I look forward to a lot of what Magic Square has coming down the road. But I did get these to show you. I have a link down below where you can get yours. Let me know what you think about these. And are you in on Legends? And even if you're not, are you impressed with what they did? Like and subscribe. Hadirim here, out. Blaster tail runners out of there. I'll check it out. No, I'll go. I'll use roller. <laughs>